No, we're on. Okay, we're, we're on. Okay, hi. <laughs> I'm trying new technology. I don't know. Maybe I've really messed it up, but I tried scheduling this. And so with the scheduling of it, the idea is that you can put all the links to all the product below beforehand. Well, yeah, you think I could find that and actually start that? I don't know. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. But I do actually have it here. So I'm able to see that Debbie from Virginia is on. So I can actually see that everybody's here. Thank you very much for being here with us. Myla, My, Myla, M-I-L-A. I wonder if from Miami. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. So hi, Marilyn. Hello, everybody. Today we're going to do some more painting on fabric. Now I've done at least three videos out there, one of them about a month ago, showing you the painting on fabric. And so this is going to be an addition to that. And my hope is that about once a month, I'm going to come back and show you some more tips and techniques on doing some more painting fabric. To start with, what do we use? We use, I use, I guess some people do it another way, I'm not sure. This is what I use. This is a gel press. This is the 8x10 gel press. I love it. I absolutely love it. I guess if there's, no, there's no faults to it whatsoever. It comes in the eight by 10, which I think is probably the most common size. I kind of like the size it makes, but I also do have a 12 by 12, which obviously is bigger as you can imagine. And then there's even one that's a 12 by 14. So keep in mind the 12 by 14, the advantage to that is that's almost the size of a fat quarter. So if you're like working with projects that have fat quarters, if you were to purchase the 12 by 14, then you would be making products that big. I don't, I make mine, they end up about this big, all right? The next thing is the paints. We're going to be using Dilutions paints. So this is a Dilutions paint, uh, twist it that way, all right. Um, and all of the links are going to be below where you can get all of these but I couldn't do that because, you know, technology eludes me. Um, there are 36 colors of these Dilutions paints. They're from a company called Ranger that's in New Jersey. Everything is made right here in the United States, except the caps. I think they buy the caps somewhere else. 36 colors. If you are into paper crafting or mixed media, you might have heard of Diane Reevely. She's the one that created this. She's actually from the UK, but she is one of Ranger's major designers, and these are the paints she came out with. As I mentioned last time, it used to be in a bigger bottle. What I love, love, love is that now it's in this little one ounce bottle, which means this is a lot of paint, and you can paint a lot with that one little one ounce bottle. But what I love is that instead of having to buy the larger ones, so usually before I started using Dilutions, I'd tell you to get the Jacquard Lumiere paints, the Neopaint paints, the textiles, and I love them. I still love them, but it's a much bigger bottle. It's like two and a quarter ounces, and it costs quite a bit more. Whereas these, you can get them for about 250 each one, which means you can get more colors. There are 36 different colors in that collection. What I don't have, and what we're actually gonna play with today, is black, because I already have a couple of bottles of black of the Jacquard, so I'm just gonna use the black from Jacquard, but know that there is black available in the Dilutions. The next thing we're gonna use is fabric. I have some high quality, high Kentucky and Oregon and New Hampshire. I was just out in, on the East Coast over the summer for a couple of times, and Missouri and Maryland and Virginia, and hello everybody. So this is a high quality white muslin. Now you can use PFD fabric. I think I said PDF fabric last time. It's PFD, prepared for dye. And what that means is it's a high quality white muslin and it doesn't have any sizing in it. And that for people that do dyeing seems to make the dyeing a little bit brighter. But I gotta tell you, my favorite dye, people that make dyed fabric like cherry wood fabrics and Ricky Tim's, when they use theirs, they just use a regular muslin. So I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'll just use a regular muslin, love it. All right, it's quite a bit less expensive. This is a high quality muslin. I actually had purchased quite a bit of it. I got it from a wholesaler. So if you're interested and you wanna get some of this fabric at about $2 a yard, let me know, go to Quilting with Nancy, for a minute there I thought I got Quilting with Nancy at gmail.com if you'd like to purchase some more of the white fabric. I don't have it on our website, which is on point TV. The other supplies, I will have a link for you. The next thing we're going to use are stencils and stamps. 
Now my favorite stencils and stamps, and I will be linking these to you, are from Joggles. So Joggles Barb is a real good friend of mine. There it is. And she makes the most fabulous stencils. Now some of them I'll be using are actually from a different designer. They weren't designed by Barb. Barb works with five or six different designers, so she's always coming, bringing to the market some really, really cool stuff. These are from Elizabeth St. Hilaire. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but that's how it reads to me. So this is what, I mean, I just love them. She just does some really, really cool designs. Now, I have lots of stencils. Here is just a small stack of my stencils. And I want you to notice something, that they're no longer white. I paint on them, and I do not um, generally rinse them off. Now, I'm going to try to do some rinsing off, just because these are starting to get pretty darn coated with paint. Um, and I've actually, what I do to rinse them off is when I'm done using them, I just throw them into my utility sink in the laundry room. Well, to be a little bit closer this time, I actually just have a um, tote right over here that I put some water in with a smidge of a little bit of the soap so that some of them maybe won't get as coated with paint as I normally get them. And then the second thing we're going to use for creating our designs our foam stamps. Again, these are from joggles.com and I'll put the links below. And then some of them are designs from Elizabeth St. Hilaire. And then some of them are just other designs that Barb's had for some time. She actually cuts these on a laser in Rhode Island also. So all made in America kind of stuff. Um, they're actually very, very good prices. You can use regular stamps too. I just don't have very many of them. I've also used texture plates in the past in some of the videos I use those and those are fine too. What I really like about the foam stamps is I don't have to have an acrylic to hold on to them. I just put it down, pick it up and away I go. So all right, so we are going to start painting. The first thing that I like to do is I like to create a base coat. So these ones are ones that I painted last time. And what I did is I just went down my rainbow of colors here and I just did a green and then a green yellow and then a yellow green and then a yellow blue. And, and I just kind of rainbowed them all up so that I got quite a nice variety. Here's one that I just did a little bit ago because I've used up all my pink ones. And then this is one that I just made. So come on over here, Athena. So this one, I had put the paint down before we started trying to figure out how to make the live happen. So it has been on the plate for, I'm going to say at least 10 minutes. And now I'm going to peel it up. I really love doing a wait sometime because when you wait to peel it up, it cleans off your mat. So now my gel press, which is right here, sorry, not mat, my gel press is perfectly clean. And I like that I get these little tidbits of the paint left from the ones before. So I like that. If you don't like that and you want to clean off your plate, you can go to the store and find some hand sanitizer, which is readily available now. Um, and you can actually clean it off with hand sanitizer. So I'm going to keep those there. These are the ones that we're going to be printing. And this is what I kind of wanted us working on today. I wanted to do some black and white. I just thought that would be fun. I'm even wearing my zebra apron today. Um, don't have any rings on. Actually, I'm going to take my watch off because this paint is permanent. When it gets on something, if it's a porous surface, it's not coming off. I can take this one that I just pulled up right now and I could throw it in the wash and nothing would happen to it. The colors would stay the same. So here I did some with some black and white and I played with different um, ideas. Some of them were, these were stencils. Uh, this was stamps. This was a stencil, and then the stamped ones, I went and stamped on different fabrics, and I love it. I love just that little bit of a black accent on these fabrics. I just think it makes them fun. Here's some other cool ones. Now, the one thing I really like about, oh, this one's cool. That one actually was done with a stencil, and I thought that turned out fabulous. What I like about using stamps in particular is that you can do them on these strange shaped scraps of fabric. So this is one that, I don't know, I'd probably used it as a pickup for a couple of different ones. And sure enough, now I've got stamps on it. So hi, New Zealand. Oh my goodness, what time is it in New Zealand anyway? It's only about 6 p.m. here in Michigan. So here's just some of the ones that I've done that kind of stamping on. And here's a strange shaped one. And then here are some that I did the stamping and stencils on that I intend to stay 
black and white. So I'm going to end up making this quilt quite a bit bigger. So just the black and white designs. So when you do the stencil down, you'll kind of get this sort of a not so black and white. So this is the black and white version. This is the actual print. So I'll show you what I'm talking about when I'm doing that. So we'll get some black and white. I like that the stamp, I just had this one long strip. Look, now I can actually use this. I've got design on it. So this is how we're gonna start. I'm gonna start by showing you real quick how to do this base coat. I'm gonna do one with some red. Just squirt some down. And maybe a little neon orange. That would just be very, very interesting. And see, I get the paint all over myself, and so I just wipe it on my apron like that. There, um, it's 11 a.m. in New Zealand. It's 11 a.m. Good Friday. morning. Friday. <laughs> oh, you're tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So what's going on in the world tomorrow that I'm going to find out about, you know, in my morning? You'll have to tell me about that later. So I put my paint down. I do like using two colors, and I'm using a brayer. I like this little four-inch brayer. I have a six-inch also. Um, I wouldn't go any bigger than six inches, but I like to just spread them out, and I like to share the, fa the color. So I'm going to share that neon orange over here with the red, and I'm going to share that red with the neon orange. Once I have it down as I want it, I like to take a piece of Decker Bond. This is a heavyweight, in, heavyweight interfacing used in decorating that has a fusible on the back side. I'll show you. I worked on a little guy. I'll show you what I do with that. So I like to clean my brayer off with that. I used to use um, another product, but it's not available anymore. So I started using Decker Bond, and I realized it's actually a better idea. So now my brayer is clean. I got a little bit of a fuzzy on there. There. And I just set my brayer over there. I don't wash my brayer. It is what it is. It'll be just fine. Then I take a piece of my white fabric. I put it down, and I go like this. Now, usually when I'm in, you know, production mode, where I'm just making lots and lots and that, um, hi, Alberta, you're not late. We're just started, so you'll be fine. I like this. I can actually see who I'm talking to. That's cool. Okay, so normally I put it down about this long. So I don't know, is that maybe 20, maybe 30 seconds? Only when I'm trying to peel up the last bit do I do it, and then it peels all up like that pink one did. And so there you go. Ta-da! So this is a red one that I'll be able to do some more painting on top of. Okay, so I'm going to set that over here. So now we're going to play with black. So this is the um, Neopake from Jacquard. They also have a regular black in their textile. They're both really, really good. And honestly, I can't tell the difference. Neopake, I think in the other colors, is very, very opaque. Black is black. I find it to be very dark and opaque. So I think the neopaque and the textile are about the same. But that's just me talking. I'm not a jacquard expert. I'd like to take my uh, palette knife. Yeah, that's what that's called. And put some down. And then I, lately I've been making t-shirts. I've got a t-shirt quilt com class coming up in Zoom. I like to take the remnants of the t-shirts and those are my rags. I use a lot of those. My friend Karen's going to give me a bundle because she's been making a lot of t-shirt quilts too. You know what? I think i got to go a little bit more. Get like that off again. Yeah, sometimes I just talk too much. Hush, Athena. <laughs> I said nothing. All right, so now I'm going to take that black and I'm going to spread it over my plate. And it's black. It's really, really dark. And I'm going to take that black and I'm going to spread it on this one piece of Decker Bond that I've just been adding more and more and more paint to. And then I'm going to take this stencil, one that I did not do one yet of. <laughs> it's the Snails from Elizabeth St. Hillier. Okay? And I'm going to want to, I might want to make a black and white one. So I'm going to take a pure white piece, if I can separate it, put it down. And now I'm going to rub it, and I'm going to rub it with the intention of getting that paint to come through those little stencil holes. So I take my time. Now I tried doing it with a brayer. Hi, Indiana. Um, can you paint directly on the fabric? Sure you can. The advantage to using a gel press as opposed to painting directly on is that if you paint directly on, you're going to, it's going to be like painting with acrylic on a canvas, which isn't a bad thing by any means, but you're going to get brush strokes. So if you're wanting to paint flowers, then sure, go ahead and paint directly on. Um, I guess you just need to watch how much paint you're putting on. Since I am not a painter, 
um, this is what I do because I don't need to be a painter to create my own fabric. But I am wanting to make sure that this gets down there. Oh, I was saying I did try this with the brayer. It really didn't work. It kept moving my fabric. So I want to make sure that I get all of those little designs in there. Okay? And then I pick it up. And I say, ooh la la. I mean, seriously, check that out. I would buy yards of that as a black and white. But now it's my very own. I have it. Now, while this is still a little bit wet, I'm going to take a piece of fabric that I did that first prime coat on, going to lay my stencil on top, and I'm going to press it down so that that paint will transfer. Now, it does not transfer really heavy. Um, it's not a super heavy coat, but I'll leave that there. You'll see what I mean. This is my third one. So first, my stencil goes down. I pick up through the stencil holes. Now, I'm picking up what is left on the plate and I'm going to rub it in and I'm going to leave it there as I come back to the one with the stencil and then peel that guy up. And so now I have a little bit of that design on there and I'm going to take my stencil now and I'm going to dump it into my water. I have enough stencils that I you know, can do like one print from each stencil and still have hundreds to go. And then this is the other one. Da -da. Okay, I love it. I absolutely love it. And I love this, where it's the negative and the positive of the same one. Now, this is definitely black and white. This is black, white, and more of a gray kind of hue. But I love the way that it looks, and I love what it did on the quilt up here. So this was the gray hue, and this was the black and white hue. I like that they, I just love it. What I don't what I don't think works so well with the stencils, and maybe I'll do one so, no, I don't want to do one because I'd be wasting my paint. I don't like it when I use a stencil. Okay, so like this one. This one's actually a mask. This is one of Elizabeth's masks. This one, so a mask is when it's almost like the cutout of the stencil. If you use this for this technique, you are going to get really large, I mean, pretty much what you're seeing right there, large black sections. And for me, for aesthetics, that just isn't going to work for me. I like it when it's more like this. So let's do another one. Let's do another one in black because it's so exciting. All right. I do love doing this. If you haven't tried it yet, you are going to love it because you can't mess up. All right. Put down some paint. Try to cap that baby. Wipe off my palette. And go. So this is going to be another stencil one. So pretty much what we just did, but with a different design. On goes my paint. Take off a little bit of that, or that as much paint as I can off the brayer. I don't know why I wore a pink shirt today. I'm sure it's going to end up black at some point. All right. Then I'm going to take another stencil. This time I'm going to take this one, which I think is so super cool. But look at what it does. It like is all over the place. So when I'm putting it down, you got to kind of let them fall where they may. So this one, I got to move him a little bit. There. All right. Oh, no, this one, pick him up. Because they're actually coiled in there, um, which makes it a little hard to get it to lay down. Now I'm going to put, oh, this time I'm going to put a piece that actually already has color on it. Do you see that? I'm going to lay that one down. I don't know why I grabbed that. I should have grabbed the white, but that's okay. You'll know that there's options. I'm going to make sure that I get into those open spaces. How long does it dry? Not very long. Um, like that pink one, this one here is one that I had just done. We're going to stamp on this one. It's pretty much dry. There's not so, which is another reason, I guess, to, that I personally wouldn't do the painting directly on. Because this dries so fast. There's so little paint on the plate that it really doesn't take any time at all to dry. And then I usually will work down here for three, four hours when I'm doing it. Like forget what time it is kind of stuff because I love doing it so much. Um, and then start working with the ones that I just did. When I press them, I press them from the back side until it's quilted. And then when it's quilted, you know, whatever. Press it any way you want. Okay. Right. Athena says we're going on to 20 minutes. So usually we try to keep these to about a half hour, okay? All right. So there that is. How very, very cool is that? 
So really cool black design on the um, pre-printed color. So now I'm going to take one of these other ones that had a slight stent, a slight um, stamp design. I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to try my darndest to get it down, which is going to be easier said than done. Bing! And down it goes. Actually, it went down on there better than it did down on the plate. I'm going to set that there, and then I'm going to take, okay, this time I'm going to take another one that's already got pre-printed, so I'm going away from the black and white a little bit. So this one's just got yellow with a little bit of green on it. I'm going to put that down. Then I cut my pieces of um, fabric. I try to cut them about 9 by um, 11. Sometimes they end up a little bit smaller. I usually take about a 3-yard section, and that's how I can sell them is in the 3-yard piece pre-cut. And I tear them into 10 or 11 inch strips along the length of grain and then I cut them the width to about a nine inch. So now I'm going to pick this guy up and see what I got. Oh, this time I did not get very much on this. Uh, okay, it's a super fun stencil, but boy oh boy, it's like a teenager. I have no idea what it's doing there. So there's a little bit of black on there, which honestly I like. I like the idea of the layers, the idea of adding different layers. So this is one that I did earlier. So it was blue. I added a little bit of red to it. Now I'm going to do some black stamping on it. So the eye of deal of um, making it layers. Um, Helen, do you wash them before you use them? No, I do not, Helen. I would, this quilt that's up here on the wall, these are all, well not all of them, there's a couple of them that I had painted months ago, but the black and whites and some of these other color ones, I just painted today, I sat down here, I cut my things, I pieced them, and ta-da, I've got a quilt top. So, nope, nothing special, and it, in, you know, in full disclosure, the ones with just a little bit of black on them, they feel as soft as can be, absolutely no difference to the hand. But the ones that have multiple layers, like this one's going to have more layers on it, they do have a little bit of a texture to it, not as soft as some other um, fabrics. I have a quilt that I made for a baby, though, and it's adorable with whites and pinks, and nothing bleeds. There's no bleeding on it. Yes, this is acrylic paint. So now I'm going to peel that one up. Okay, now that's really, really cool. So the black, it almost masks off the other design in there. And that is just awesome. What's so, so awesome about it is I'm the only one that has it. This is a, this is a Nancy Rolfsma original. Nobody else has any fabric just like this. So when I'm using it, I know that it's mine. Love that. Now we're going to do some with the stamps. So I'm going to do the same idea. I'm going to put the black down. But this time, because I'm doing stamps, I want there to be a little bit more playtime with the fabric. So because I want to be able to play longer, you can add one of two things. One is you can add a textile medium. I don't add textile medium to make it stay any better on the fabric. I put in the textile medium to make it be a longer playtime. Or iridescent medium. I love this stuff. This is like textile medium with shiny stuff inside. And okay, why not? right? Shiny stuff in the paint. This is a very good thing. And what surprised me is that when I mixed it with the black, it did not turn it gray. It is the slightest bit of gray hue, but not so much that you notice it on the fabric. So now that has a little shine to it, but mainly by adding, ooh, this was sparkly, by adding the iridescent medium to it, I've given myself some more time to play. Before I start with my stamps, right here on my, so this is a craft mat, a ranger craft mat, which means pretty much it's indestructible, and I tape it down to the back of my um, OmniGrid cutting mat. So I've got a puddle of water there, and you'll know why in a second. Now I'm going to take my foam stamps. I love that with the foam stamps, I don't need an acrylic to hold on to them. I just hold on to them, and I put it down, and I pick it up, and I put it down. So on this one, oh goodness, this is one of Elizabeth's stamps that I did not get to use last time. This is the first time I'm using it, and I love it. It's a very, it's just like, it's a smaller version than the 
stencil was. So I usually, let me get these ones out from underneath it. I usually try to kind of go around the fabric I'm going to stamp onto without overlaying first. On the gel press itself, I just go to wherever I can pick up paint. So now I have pretty much everything colored, covered. I could leave it like that. Actually, it looks pretty cool, but I'm going to show you what I normally do. I get a little overzealous and I add more paint and I kind of start mixing it up. So you know that you can do whatever floats your boat, right? You're making your fabric. You're not trying to make my fabric. Woo! Okay, very cool. Love the stamps. Now, oops, I got that in water. No big deal. I'm going to take and lay that stamp down in the water. I don't want my stamps to get dried out with the stencils. Where with, I'm sorry, with the paint. Whereas with the stencils, I am so totally cool if it gets on there. But, you know, sometimes I try to not do that so much. So now I've got that one. You gotta love that, right? Everybody love that? Hi, Elizabeth, you have, oh, hi Elizabeth. Elizabeth actually was in my class year, last year at um, Quilt Festival. Sad, no fizz, Quilt Festival this year, but they are gonna, I don't know if you know this or not, but Quilt Festival, which is the big show down in Houston in October, obviously they're not doing it this year, but they are gonna do a virtual event in the beginning of December, so maybe keep watching for that. Nope, I do not set the paint, the paint, Linda, i done. When I am done with the painting, I cut it and start using it. Do you want to press it? Sure, you can press it. Do you want to? I don't know. The truth is, is acrylic paint, if you get it on your shirt and you don't get it off the very instant it's on your shirt, it's there for life, right? You've been there. You've done that. You've painted before. Any kind of paint is just going to stick to you. What makes these paints unique is that they are not hard and crusty when they're on fabric. Right. So now I'm going to go down. This is that one that I took the paint for the stamping. And now I can put this down and pick this up. And sometimes I put a little bit too much paint and then that happens. And so, you know, it'll come off tomorrow. I could. One thing I usually do is I usually use gloves in a bottle and I put that on my hands first and that kind of makes it so the paint doesn't stick too much. Um, and you could wear rubber gloves if, if you so choose. So that one's going to be really dark. Okay. So that's the reverse of the stamps. I see that some places, normally I try to get into these places that haven't had any work on them. But this time I didn't. But that's okay. I love it. So those are that version. So now I'm going to take this one that has the black on it because my day is done. We're over 30 minutes, Athena says. This has the black on it. Now I'm going to take some iridescent medium. I'm going to brayer out the iridescent medium on this little tiny bit of paint. There's not much on there at all. Looks like July fireworks. Yes, it does. Do you need no? Yeah. So, hey, Elizabeth that took the class in Houston. I am wondering if you are still doing any, if you kept doing it. Now I'm going to take my piece of clean one, clean piece of fabric, and I'm going to smear this down, and I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it here overnight. Usually after I get done with the live, I go upstairs, and I eat, and I have a glass of wine, and I call it a night. So this means my night is done. I'm going to leave this here. In the morning, when I come to peel this up, it'll peel up all of that black that was on there, and I'll have a really dark piece that maybe, oh, oh, next time we do this, I'll show you with white, because I do have some white paint, and so we could do black on white. Why didn't I think of that earlier? Which reminds me, you know what you could do is just use black fabric and do all of these same techniques with white on top of it. Okay, we'll do that next time. Does that sound like fun? All right. So I would like to thank you. Yes, Elizabeth. Good. I would, you know, send me, Elizabeth, send me a picture of some of the paints, one fabrics you've been painting, maybe a project you made with it, because remember the intention here is to make fabric and create something with it. Although the process is really fun, but, you know, you can only add so much to your stash, right? Okay, so Elizabeth, send me a picture of what you've been working on to quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com. As soon as we get done here, oh yeah, I am going to go get a glass of wine, but then I'm going to put a link below here. So please be patient for maybe an hour. I'll get all the links below. 
so that you can go and purchase any of this product, okay? I'd like to thank you very much for joining me. I love doing this. I think you're going to really like it too. Have a great evening, okay?